Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do another tutorial on the Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition Editor. The topic of this video will be variables and how to use them. And in order to demonstrate them I made a little scenario here. And I will just go through the triggers one by one and explain what they do. Now this is a little bit more than usual because here I tried to incorporate both an example for an easy example for newer fellas and one more advanced one. So let's get straight into it. What those two variables do is the first one will be uh, counting the kills of your team and if you reach 100 kills you win and the other one is a fifth resource basically. So let's start with the easier one, the kills. First trigger count kills P1, tests if player 3 has lost at least one unit to player 1 and if that's the case it will be reduced by 1 so every time a kill gets made it gets reset to 0 and the variable kills gets changed by 1 so 1 gets added onto it. So of course you could have a huge number of custom variables, those are by default named variable 1 and variable 2. But you can just, if you select one, uh, like for example variable 2, you can name it test and then every time you will refer to the test variable it will actually refer to number 2 here. But let's put it back to kills because that's what it should do. And here it's basically the same thing only for player 2, so kills by player 2 on units which you have controlled by player 3 will then get reduced by 1 and increase the kills variable by 1. Here this trigger really it has a condition that it will never be met which is uh, guy will be defeated. I just use this displayed variables to show them on the interface the ore storage and the kills. And here in the end 100 kills so variable value larger or equal so as soon as 100 or more kills are done so it's important to use large or equal because it can happen sometimes that it just jumps uh, by two and then it would never hit. Uh, never hit. In this case, large or equal is just the save away. And then it will declare a victory for player three, but since this box is unchecked, it will actually declare defeat for player three. So that is the kills variable. Now onto the next example, which is a little bit more complicated. It works with those uh, mining camps here. So as long as player 1 has captured this mine and a timer like every 10 second runs out, the OR variable will actually get uh, increased by 5. So those will passively generate you OR. Now what can you use those ORs on you gather here? Well, the answer is you can train boyars from your stable. Let's switch over here. So I did something I showed you in the how to create custom units tutorial. I modified attribute from the boy. In this case I set the food and gold cost to zero. I changed the description to uh, display create elite boya cost 25 or. So normally you would here uh, put the resource cost since or is not really a resource you can still put it here and it to the player it would appear as if this was a proper resource in the game. And of course the train location is in this table now because otherwise well it would not be here. Also keep in mind I disabled all other units so normally the uh, button location 1 in this table for player 1 would be blocked by scouts. In this case since it's cleared we can safely assign another unit in this case the boya to that. Well now the question is how do we use the ore to uh, well, train those boyars. I mean, it says in the in the description it costs 25 ore, but that is actually not the fact. This is a free unit, but we need to make it appear to be actually costing resources. So how do we do that? Let's look into those triggers here. Are available. As long as the ore amount is 25 or higher, so you would have enough ore to train the boyar, then the boyar will get enabled. And we activate the trigger or not available. So what does this or not available trigger do? It tests if we do have less than 25. So if we would have less than 25 or that would mean we are not able to train any more bowyars because we don't have enough resources for that. 
how do we make sure that this actually works out? Because keep in mind, all of the boyars, we could just put 25 boyars into the production queue, even if you only have 25 ore. But as soon as we hit less than 25, the boyar would get disabled, so you cannot train any further boyars. And now is a trick to uh, actually clear the production queue of a building. We replace this building here with an architect. Of course, we also could use just every stable here, but in this case, I just used the simple set objects. And then all of the aqueducts, so in this case, it's a player three aqueduct, should mention that. All of the player three aqueducts get replaced by player one stables. So this will happen that quickly that you actually don't see it. But since it has been a different building for a very short time, the production queue is cleared. And this way, you will not be able to train more boyas than you would have resources for. And now finally, I reactivate the ore available trigger. So as soon as I got more than 25 ore, I can train boyars again. Then here, the pay boyar trigger, well, it pays the boyar. And it does it in a way that tricked a little bit here, actually, because <laughs> now it'll allow me jumping back to the boyar attributes. So the boyar description actually says, create elite bolia why is that well in order to pay every single boyar uh, i made it in a way that as soon as a player owns a single boyar as soon as player one owns one boyar actually gets replaced with an elite boyar and now also the overall gets decreased by 25. this way we can make sure that every single boyar gets paid for but at the same time we don't pay multiple times for the same unit since every time we pay for a unit, it gets replaced with a elite boyar. In this way, way, the next time this checks, there are no boyars, there are only elite boyars on the field. Okay, the other triggers, um, they are not really important here. The attack wave one will use an attack move on those units. It will set the other variable to its initial state, which is 100, which researches chivalry and conscription for play one. And then as soon as player one owns two mining camps, this is able well, to close the scenario. Lots of units spawn and you need to fend them off to win this scenario. Actually, you only need to kill 100 of those guys and you win. Yeah, so, so that's basically the triggers. I'll just demonstrate them real quick. So here's the first attack wave. You see here the kills to victory are zero and it doesn't matter who kills those units. Uh, it will get increased by one either way. Okay, this fight is basically one. We can send our longbowmen to capture uh, the mines now. And you see here the elite bowler is available. We do have 100 ore. So see, so you can queue up as many as you like. Well, as long, many as the queue allows. But every time a unit gets created, the ore storage is being decreased by 25. And now you see Bolyar is no longer available, the queue has been cleared, we got 5 Bolyars and lost our 100 ore, just as intended. Now we got the second mining camp here, so we got the full income of uh, ore. Let's speed this up slightly. See there, 50, 55, 60, 65, and we can afford to train some more boyars. Speeding through this real quick. Get into 60 kills. Seventy-five. So this is not really a hard scenario, but. As a tech demo, it should be sufficient. I got it closer to 100 kills. As soon as this is on 100, there we go. Victory is declared. Yeah, so of course you could make this a little bit nicer. So if you get 100 kills, then a message get tr gets triggered, and then after a few seconds you win. That would be like a smoother campaign-like um, transition into a victory screen, but. The base functionality is there. So if there are any more questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. 
if there are any more ideas for other things I could cover here as well, comments are the place for that. I hope you could at least take something out of today's tutorial and I wish you a great evening. Goodbye.